morning everyone, it's Heidi from flutterbyheidi.wordpress.com back again with another Ferrero Friday project and to all intents and purposes this looks like a very straightforward box until you take the lid off at which point it looks like the origami box but actually it isn't because it just opens up like so so I thought it was a bit of fun as you can see I've got it fits four Ferrero or four Raffaello or four Lindor balls, whichever your preferred chocolate is. Um, and the way it closes um, is just by sort of, it's a little, it can be a little bit tricky. Um, but once you get it, get, uh, get it sorted, you, 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 you'll, you'll find it, it works really well. And all you do is you just tuck those creases in underneath and then it folds in. And then you pop the lid on. So that's the... Um, that's the box uh, with the lid and you'll see I've used some of the new cupcakes and carousels paper here uh, which has got lovely peekaboo peach and I've used calypso coral and some of the ruched ribbon um, as well and then the stamp set I've used on the top there is from the designer tin of cards so if you bought the designer tin of cards kit uh, and the stamp set to go with it this is another use for that and again it's a really lovely stamp set full of very useful sentiments and little twiddly bits, um, little embellishments to go around. And I finally worked out what the and hoping you catch it is for. I've looked at this before and I kind of go, I really don't get this. And hoping you catch what? Thinking catching a cold. I'm British, we talk about colds a lot. But actually it's sending love and hoping you catch the love. A duh. Uh, anyway, it's probably just me. Everybody else has probably spotted that before, but um, I hadn't. But now, now I know I shall be using that on um, on a future project. I just thought I'd mention it. Perhaps just makes me out to be a little bit dim. Um, so the project we're doing is this one. Let's get on with it. Um, first of all, you're going to need some card, obviously. Um, and I, ooh, I did didn't say I've used the stitched framelits. Now these are a product that actually isn't in the catalogue at the moment but it is available it's coming out in the new annual catalogue and it's a pack of layering circles ovals and squares which have this lovely stitching uh, on the outside and they will be available from the middle of January 2017 to order so um, if you want them get your order in now which of course means that you'll get a celebration item if you just spend a little bit more uh, so now on with the project as I said you'll need some card so you need a piece of cardstock, um, and I'm actually going to do it in centimetres. I will give you the inches dimensions as well. Um, and the piece of card that you're going to start with is um, 29 by, well, it, uh, 10 and a half centimetres. So yeah, yeah, I could have measured it there, couldn't I? So 29 um, by um, 10 and a half centimetres. And you're going to need your normal um, trimmer, and also uh, you'll need a ruler and a scoring tool. So that's the base piece of cardstock that you're going to need. You'll then need your layers to go on the top and I've also, you'll see here, I've actually uh, put a single piece of card on the bottom. I thought it would be quite nice for a change and it also means you don't waste quite so much cardstock by having all of them overlapping at the bottom and I'll explain what I mean by that in a moment. So the first thing you're going to do is score the long side um, every seven centimetres. So that's seven, 14, 21 and 28. And in inches, so it's five and a half by 11 and a half. And in inches that is two and three quarters. Uh, it's five and a half eight and a quarter and 11 inches. So that's uh, on the long edge. And then on the short edge, you're going to score at three and a half and seven. So three and a half just there and seven centimeters. So you're putting it into three equal sections actually. And therefore on your inches, it's one and three eighths and two and three quarters. Okay, so that's your scoring done with your trimmer. Once you've got that, if you get a ruler and, um, and scoring tool, oh, you need to mark the midpoints, I should have said, midpoints along the top as well. So mark the midpoints at three and a half centimetres, 
So you're just going to mark just the topic. Now you could do that with a pen if you wanted. I use it for my scoring tool. So three and a half, 10.5, and I just bring it down and just kind of nudge it. Um, at 17.5, so that's one of those, it's just over the horrible point on this bit here. Uh, at 25 centimetres. So those midpoints are one and three eighths, four and one eighths, six and seven eighths, nine and a half. Okay. So having marked those, now we can put our trimmer away. And using a ruler, um, you could try doing this on the trimmer if you wanted to. If you're careful, you can. Um, I just find it actually is just quicker to do it, to get my ruler out. And again, you, we've used this technique on various boxes, haven't we? So all you're doing is you're just scoring from the midpoint that you've marked there down to the corner. You know, there are you know for all the boxes that are out there, they're fairly. You know, I think there's something. Yeah, there are only a certain number of, of, of ways you can uh, make a box. It's just nice to do something a little bit different on the closure for a change. Um, and I just find I, I I just like playing around with bits of card. I sit here in the evenings. Um, my husband gets a bit fed up because I sit there with a, with a pen, pen of paper and then um, sort of start sketching out what uh, what the box might look like. And then uh, and, and and then I get the paper and, and start. Because I don't want to waste my good card on, 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 on templates. I either get some really old cheapy cards that I've had for years left over from crafting. Oh, we're folding and burnishing here. Um, or um, I, I use just copier paper. Um, and with my Ferrero projects, because they all use, obviously a Ferrero doesn't change size, they all use the same dimensions. It's, um, I kind of know a lot of them off by heart now. Once you've done this, you're going to be trimming away that little corner there. So that's our skinny corner. And then you're cutting straight up on these. So you're not notching out, you're literally just cutting straight up to the score line on each of those. And then this is a box, so we're going to, you're going to need your fuse, or if you prefer to use um, a decent red tape, that would work fine as well. And again, with a box, when I'm folding a square box, if you fold it like so, you'll get a good fold. And again, just burnish to make sure that's got a really good, um, good uh, crease. And then all you're going to do is um, just release those creases. Release them. Fold those creases. I don't know. And just crease them down. And you can do that when it's. You can do that before you've made it up into a box. Uh, on this one, I actually used to find, I found I was doing it once I've made the box up. So, you're going to have something that looks like that with them folded in. And what I found is if you go in and just reinforce the one side particularly, I'm just folding in there, that will just help it when we come to close the box. And on the bottom, so this is where I said, if, if you'd made it deeper, you, it just wastes a lot of card, I find. So all you're doing is you're just folding over like so. And sometimes you'll find that it'll, you know, it'll close better one way than the other. It gives a neater finish. And all I'm going to do again is just come in with a bit of fuse here on either side. And that's just going to hold that in place what we're actually going to do is put a piece of cardstock on the inside of that and the card that you need is um, obviously to match it you're going to want some calypso coral and so you'll need two pieces which are um, the same as, as your base so it's seven by seven centimeters um, so that's um, about two and uh, two and three quarters by two by two and three quarters um, and you can use one or two pieces one on the inside one on the outside um, it's not carrying a lot of weight so I'm just trimming a cut piece here because I can't see the pieces I cut previously there we go it's a bit chaotic in here you probably know, behind me is a new bath 
I would turn around and show it you, but I probably will fall over. Um, having had the kitchen done, um, my husband um, has changed jobs recently and was given, he was told, oh, you can have this week in January. Well, great, yeah, who wants to go away in January unless you're going skiing? Especially when you've got school kids, you can't take them out of school in the UK anymore. Um, so um, he, he, we were talking about having the bathroom done anyway. Um, so he's decided to have the bathroom done. So we're going to be without a bathroom next week. The only good news is that I'm actually away on a course. So my poor husband is going to be here on his own with my uh, younger son and they're uh, having a new bathroom fitted while I am um, work, working away from home in a hotel with a bathroom. So I think I got the better deal for a change. Right, so there we go. Two pieces of card, seven by seven, two and three quarter by two and three quarter. Pop those inside and out and it gives a really nice finish. Once you've uh, done that, I've just found the card. It's because I cut it in peekaboo peach by mistake. Okay. There's your box. All you need to do now is pop your Ferrero in. And in case anybody knows, I don't just eat the Ferrero, I do just reuse them actually. And then all you, what you do is you tuck one of the sides underneath on all four corners. So it goes like so, and it's this last one that's the tricky one. So they have to make sure they're all tucking in. And there we go. And that gives a folded closure. Then we're going to make the lid. So to make the lid, you can get your trimmer back out. And you're going to need a piece of cardstock for the lid that is 12.2 um, by 12.2. Now again, um, it's a slightly odd kind of measurement, um, but obviously that's um, that's because um, you, you just want it very slightly larger than um, than your than your base, and, and you need it to accommodate the layers. Uh, so I found that sort of twelve point two sort of works. Um, and that's actually uh, four and three quarters. So it's one of those where it actually works better in inches than it does in, in centimetres. Okay, so just take that to 12.2. And then you're going to use your trimmer again. And this time the scoring is actually very easy because you're going to score at one centimetre and two and a half centimetres. And you're going to do that on all four sides. So one and two and a half, one, and two and a half and that's a way to um, to get get your box lids to fit um, if you always have your you know you just add a couple of millimeters onto the basic um, size of your box your lid should then fit and we're doing a reinforced lid as you've done before so we're cutting away the outer three squares on the lid that you've cut I'm just angling that little tab slightly so, so cut away the squares, angling, and the angle doesn't need to be enormous, it's just to sort of make it um, so it just tucks in a little more neatly. And then again the last one. And then again, with these, um, I just need to fold and uh, burnish. And the Stampin' Up uh, bone folders really are fantastic. Uh, I've used others, you can get plastic ones about, but I find after a while, if, you, if you're, uh, I'm quite hard on mine, and they kind of get little, little marks on them, so I do find the Stampin' Up one works really well. So you're gluing on the tab, and on that outside strip. So tab and outside strip. Try not to glue it onto the, your work surface as I'm trying to do. Tab and outside strip. And just that last tab that I missed on the first one. Okay. And then all you're going to do is line up those tabs. That's where the little bit of glue just helps. Okay. Like so, and then you fold in 
okay, like so. And that's where you really do need to reinforce with your bone folder because that will give a really nice crisp finish to your lid. Okay. And then that lid obviously will fit on top of our box. So all that's left is actually to decorate our, um, our box. of layers then what you're going to need on here uh, for layers you're going to need some pieces of card for each one and the card layers are 6.5 by 3 centimeters two and a half by one and a quarter and then the DSP layers are 6 by uh, 2.5 and um, which is 2 by 7 uh, by 1 inch yeah so with those all we're going to do is just layer those up very quickly and I've used the cupcakes and carousels paper again here which is the, the one I used on the other one but this is another one of the papers and you'll see it's actually got some lovely it's got so saffron in it as well as um, as the calypso coral it's really sort of kind of like almost ice cream kind of fun they are sort of designed to be fun fair sort of colors so um, snail run out okay yeah another snail ha happens to be to hand thank goodness so you do four side panel layers then you need a layer for the top um, and your layer for, for the uh, top is is you need a layer of, of DSP you need a layer of uh, card which is slightly smaller uh, so that's the layer of DSP is 6 by 6 you need a layer of card that is 6.5 by 6.5 um, and then I've used which is this one here like so like so This goes on the top like that. Then we've got our stamped layer. And as I said, I've used the uh, thanks to you and I'm going to use it in Peekaboo Peach this time. And that just pops up on there really nicely. And a little bit of Calypso Coral, which is going to be six by six because this one is a five and a half by five and a half and I've actually stamped on the on the wrong side just conscious of the time ticking away there we go piece of card six and a half by six and a half like so now it's going to be six by six I said six by six in the first place as well. There you go, six by six, fab. A couple of dimensionals on the back there. Just to lift it up, gives a nice um, effect. You don't have to go mad with dimensionals, you only need them in the, in the corners or on the outer edges. got that I've got that wrong but hey there we go never mind we've got a just slightly different layering I will put the correct dimensions on my blog for you um, and all that remains to do is to pop your panels onto the side and don't forget if you need any of the products shop online one box you can trim it with some ribbon if you want, you can leave it plain if you want and I'll make sure I put the right dimensions for all of those layers um, on my blog for you. Apologies it was a bit chaotic um, but I'll talk to you soon. Take care now, bye bye.